All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff Cordero, and we are down here at Barefoot Archery in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we are trying out some of the new bows for 2022. This bow that I got right here is the Hoyt RX-7. This is Hoyt's carbon offering for their new line of bows this year. Much like the RX-7 Ultra that I tested out earlier, this is the 30-inch axle-to-axle RX-7. Too many numbers. So like I mentioned, this is a new flagship bow for Hoyt for 2022. They have had a carbon bow in their lineup for quite some time now, but this one has gone through a major reconfiguration from the models of years past. In the past, Hoyt has used a three tube carbon system to build out their bows, which frankly left them kind of bulky and wide. And the new trend for bows, at least in the last two or three years, is to get everything as slim as possible and bring everything in towards the center of the bow. And with their new riser design, they've definitely accomplished that. This new carbon riser design they have is really honestly no wider than any aluminum bow that's on the market. So it was really awesome to see them build something that rivals the size because the carbon bows in the past, like I said, they were just kind of big and bulky. Another thing they did with this riser design, which is a, it's just different from what they've done in years past, is they've had most of their riser in years past was carbon, but they had aluminum end caps on it from top and bottom where the limb pockets bolted to, and they have completely removed those for this year. So it is completely carbon all the way from where the limb bolts screw in all the way down to the bottom. There is no more aluminum on the center of this bow. That being said, they have introduced some new features to it as well that they did not have with the RX-5 series in the past. Last year, Hoyt offered a Picatinny rail system that you could mount the Picatinny sights to, but it wasn't integrated into the carbon riser itself. It was a piece that you had to bolt on and then you could use the Picatinny rail in the front. But now they have integrated it all the way into the bow so it comes stock so you can run the Picatinny rail in the front or you can use their traditional sight mount holes on the side. They have continued to use the integrated rest system, as this one is here, that a lot of manufacturers have gone to now recently. And frankly, I think it's really good to get everything in the inline and the center of the bow. It keeps everything tighter, you keep your quiver closer, and there's really less need for counterbalancing weights with sidebars. The HBX Pro cam that they have come out with this year is slightly different from the HBX cam of last year, and unfortunately, the mods from last year will not work on the new HBX Pro Cam, which it, it's kind of a little disheartening uh, from Hoyt that they offered a cam system for one year and then now they have moved on. Hopefully next year and in future years they can keep this system and it makes it a little easier on the consumer and pro shops to be able to stock parts for them. They now have a rotating module that they have introduced on the HBX Cam, which makes changing draw lengths a lot easier. Let's get a few arrows to this bow and we'll give you my first impressions of it. After shooting the RX-7 Ultra and to feel how smooth that draw cycle was and how dead the bow is was in the hand, I have a feeling this one is going to be exactly the same. It might be a tick stiffer on the draw because of the shorter to axle axle length, but I have no doubt that it'll be just as smooth because it is the same cam. Yeah. Just like in this RX-7 Ultra, it is a really consistent weight band through the draw cycle. It starts off a little stiff and just kind of holds that and evens out as closer and closer you get to the end. And once it dumps over into the back wall, it's a pretty good back wall with a little bit of that Hoyt sponge that they've had in years past. But it's actually, it's really comfortable. Like I, I shoot a Hoyt RX-4 Ultra right now and I don't mind that at all, especially with a hinge or tension release where you're trying to pull through the shot and be dynamic. This thing, I don't know if it's the new riser design or the cam system, what it is about this new RX-7 line this year, but they're just really dead. They're like, it's a really good dead. It, it feel, almost feels, besides the sound, it feels like you're shooting an aluminum bow, how in the dead in the hand it is. In the past, Hoyt bows have always wanted to kind of jump a little bit. This one doesn't really want to jump out of my hands. I can just feel it pushing the arrow instead of being real snappy on me. Yeah. 
The grip on this, this is a new grip that they have come out with this year. This is the vital point grip. This has like a little bit of a, like a rubber texture and a little sponge to it. So if it's something that you're gonna be doing a lot of hunting or you live down in the south like we do here in North Carolina, where that early part of the season can be upwards of the low 90s and you're sweaty, this has a really nice texture and it feels really good in the hand and it feels like it's gonna hold well and you're not gonna have a lot of slipping going on. I feel like it is an improvement from grips they've had in years past. So this bow being a 30 inch axle to axle bow, it's a little shorter than I would prefer personally. I have a 29 and three quarter inch draw length. This is set up at 29 inches and 70 pounds right now. I prefer something with a little taller axle to axle. It gives me a better string angle. I feel more natural and more comfortable shooting it. But for someone who is going to be doing a lot of sitting around in a blind, moving around in tight spaces in a deer stand, I feel like this is a, a really, the size bow, this is a really awesome size bow. Me being a little taller, a little wider, I would like something like the RX-7 Ultra personally, but everyone has their, uh, everyone has their own personal preferences and that's why you guys should come out to Barefoot Archery down in Short Charlotte, North Carolina and meet with Jesse and the guys and shoot some of these bows, test them out. They're gonna get you set up into something that is gonna be comfortable for you and that you're gonna be really happy with. Until next time, guys, I'm Jeff Cordero, and we'll check you out in the next video.